Did you hear the news? Yes. My God. Fruit Stripe is no more. Our beloved Fruit Stripe gum has been discontinued forever. Forever. At first when I heard the news, I thought, well, maybe it will go the way of the Twinkie and the Ding Dong. I love Ding Dongs. You know, they came back. They were picked up. Hostess was going to be done like this, and then it was picked up by some other company or whatever, and we still have Ding Dongs everywhere. But this wonderful little gem is no more. Go try finding Fruit Stripe on your store shelves. That's right, it's gone. So, of course, when I first heard the news, I went crazy. When I first heard the news, I thought, I better act right now, you know? I better do what I can and get as much Fruit Stripe as I possibly can, you know, by the kilo. This is the best in all of Colombia. So, listen. It's still out there on the internet. You, if you're lucky, you'll be paying, um, it's out there right now. You'll be paying about 25 a brick, you know, and I'm not talking a brick. I'm talking a brick. $25 you'll pay. Luckily, I got in way before the price hike. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yes, I uh, vacuum sealed these. I made freeze dry, so I have a freeze drying machine. I mean, freeze dry a bunch. I can't possibly think about not having Fruit Stripe in my life. The only other product out there, you know, there is another product out there that I totally would give anything for one more can of it. When I was a kid, you old people will know what I'm talking about. Um, when I was a kid, there was a special chocolate drink called K.O., Yes, K-O, like K-O, but spelled K-O, K-A-Y-O. Had a little guy on it with a derby hat. Man, I don't, that was such a special thing. Of uh, that, that drink was a special, special part of my childhood. I'd go on field trips. My mom would pack my lunch in my lunchbox, you know, and she'd wrap a cold can of K-O in foil. You know, and I'm like, oh, that was, everyone's like, just drink Yoo-Hoo. I'm like, no, ain't no Yoo-Hoo coming close. Yoo-Hoo don't even come close to the taste of K.O., all right? K.O. was around for a long time, I think from like the 1800s or the 30s or whatever. And, you know, in the 70s and early 80s, I caught the last, you know, last of the K.O. God, I wish I could taste that once again, you know? That's the way Fruit Stripe is going, folks. It's going the way of K.O. Anyway. Mmm. It was wonderful chewing that little piece of gum. Anyway. Yes, I have a lot of Fruit Stripe. Ridiculous, yes. Anyway. Where do we begin? So, I know I haven't been around in a while. I took off to Florida. Went to the Meekum auction, which was totally insane. Holy cow. Over 4,000 freaking cars there. 4,500 cars, I think. Um, that is crazy for an auction. You know, for a car auction? My God. Um, had a blast. You know, went down to my buddy's crazy house again. I'd say, I can't call it a house. It's a compound. Bazillion dollar compound. Um, one of many. So, I'm back. We haven't talked about masks in a long time. But in the meantime, while I was away, certain things were being foam-filled by the best foam filler in all the land, Mr. Mascahuna. So a lot of pieces, you'll, you'll notice the back shelves are filling up again, you know. Um, I sent him about a dozen pieces, maybe 10 or 12 masks, and uh, I got a bunch back, and my God, Once in a while, you'll hear someone say, foam filling is horrible for masks. It's worse for them. It's, uh, you know, 
I don't know where these people come up with this crap. Um, I, I'm guessing there are types of foam out there you could use inside of a rubber mask that may harm it. But in general, foam filling is a wonderful thing, okay? I would guess that three quarters of the masks in this collection right now are foam filled. Close to it anyway. I mean, all the good stuff, all the great stuff I'm bringing home from Frank's one at a time. That's what a lot of people don't get it. Like this hobby, yeah, it's expensive, number one. Number two, if you really want to take care of these things, it costs money. You know, um, you could spend a hundred bucks a piece foam filling these. Do the math. Okay, I sent at least 10 or a dozen out recently. It's a lot of cheddar. So just keeping up masks and trying to preserve masks, it costs money. Um, in the beginning, you think like, oh, I've got the greatest masks. They're mine. I'm keeping them forever. No, you don't keep anything forever. You are basically the curator of this stuff for the next guy. Okay, we don't, we're not here forever. I've talked about that in the recent videos, but you know, so I am a very serious collector. Some, some people beg to differ, but I am. And so when I get things like these that are real special, and they come from Frank's collection and they've got history and they're stunning and one-off type stuff that you won't see anywhere else. I want them to live on way longer than I'll be around. So I do what I can sending them out, you know, getting these things foam filled. Like, look at this. This is so, this is an incredible piece by David Ayers. Um, David has an amazing uh, portfolio and history um, in the movies, you know, film and mask making and, um, you know, if you've seen Close Encounters of the Third Kind, you'll see David's work there, the little aliens at the end. I mean, cool, cool stuff. This is David's version of Dorian Gray, and uh, he made, I don't know, he made uh, not a handful, maybe... He produced some of these back in the day. In 1980, he made this Dorian Gray. Um, however, most won't have an eyeball like that. <clears throat> this one here happens to be David's personal uh, production house copy. This was his copy that you'll see in the old black and white photos of him with it. This is the one. And, uh, of course, Frank ended up with that because it was a special copy. Um... It's rare to begin with. Like, I don't think I've ever seen one anywhere in anyone's collections. Um, but of course, Frank had, you know, David's personal one, and it's gorgeous, like brand new. So it's it feels aged. I mean, the, the rubber, it's not like you want to just squish these masks when they're aging. They're, they're firming up. But it was in such good condition. I sent it out to have it filled so this, one will live, so this thing will live on a long time. You know, it's... Uh, Look at that. David Ayer Studio, copyright 1980. Awesome, awesome piece. So, which brings us to the B. Garrett Theta, the crazy customized BGT, uh, the Don Post mask here that Frank owned. I have a feeling maybe the Tharps did this for Frank. I finally got emails from Kathy the other night, which I may read two of them to you because they're about two of the masks on the shelves here. I gotta ask Kathy if they painted this for Frank. So let's take off his vintage Creature from the Black Lagoon 3D glasses. This, these are originals when it was aired on television around 1980 or 81. Um, that was a big deal when I was a kid. Creature from the Black Lagoon was gonna be in 3D on television. And uh, these are the real glasses. Anyway. I think he got them in the TV Guide or at 7-Eleven, something like that. That could have been, was was that part of Svengoolie back then? I'm just having a mental block. But anyway, I'm getting off track. This was in Frank's collection, and it was on his shelves for years, you know, probably since the 80s. And this sucker is a 1977 mask. So remember, either Frank got this in the late 70s or like around 1980 probably. But... It was on the shelf for so long that 
the bottom started mushrooming out. You know, masks that sit on a shelf forever will start doing this. Gravity just, you know, takes its toll. And uh, this thing was getting kind of fragile. Not, not cracking, but man, you could tell if this thing was not dealt with right now, two or three years from now, there's going to be problems. It's going to crack. It's going to start, you know, melting away or breaking. So foam filling not only prevents that, not only helps it to live on, but it also brings out the beautiful shape of the mask. You know, when he foam fills these things, um, it's different than your conventional filled, fill job. <laughs> um, I'm going to foam fill some things soon. I got a couple gallons of material upstairs uh flex foam three i'm going to use this time usually i use flex foam four which is more stiffer There's a cat outside. It's freezing. I can go feed this damn thing. It's it's lost. My God. Can I just film? If that fucking cat went back up there. You little shit. <laughs> what were we talking about? So, there's a basement window up high. You know, like... Uh, you go outside, it's one of the windows down the ground, you know. There's pinball games up against the wall, and uh, I hear this, my, one of my cats is going nuts. And there's a little homeless cat outside sleeping down in the window well because it's warm. And my cat's pissed off, like, get the fuck out of here. Like, you're inside. You should be laughing, like, ha ha. You know, no, you, do, you sit there and hiss at it, like, leave it alone. I brought a bunch of food out there. Um, it sucks. This is why you people out there that have kittens, okay, you have to get them fixed. Um, I'm not some, you know, I, I love animals, yes, obviously. <laughs> but I never knew, I never knew the importance of all this crap, you know. They say one cat, and this is no bullshit they say one cat like outside can be responsible for a thousand cats like you know feral cats roaming the freaking streets and the woods for years to come because they keep getting pregnant and they keep pet and then those babies get pregnant then all those babies get pregnant and before you know it there's millions of them and you know how f sad it is it's it's probably five degrees outside right now and there's a little cat out there i can't bring it in the house you know um maybe i'll put a box out there with straw and stuff in it i've done that before and they just don't even go in it but anyway can't save them all but over the past three years we've had these babies here like those those two cats were born here in the basement from a cat i found outside i see cats all the time running through the woods that look just like my cats. Like they are totally related to these two freaks. So I'm just saying, they got a lot of cousins and brothers and sisters out there, these two, and it's sad, you know? But anyway, back to masks, yes. Yeah, differences in foam filling. All right, so it's funny that when I foam fill a mask, it takes me all day. <laughs> that could be because I use little Dixie cups with little tiny amounts because I, I, you know, I, it's hard to regulate foam. Two little Dixie cups, half full, A and B, parts A and B, mix them together. Let's say this was an upside down mask. That little mixture in the bottom can go like expand like crazy, okay, when it's cured and finally dry. So, it's tough to measure, it's tough to know what a mask is going to take. Now, when my friend does them, he doesn't do them for just anyone. He's got his clients, he doesn't take on more people, I'm sorry. But when he does it, 
he uses a very expensive machine with a gun and it's like you ever see like you ever get a brand new carburetor in a box and they got that foam around it they have they spray it around it and it forms to the carburetor you know like when they ship things like that it's one of those machines and uh, you could easily spend 10 20 30 thousand dollars on these foaming machines for a for a business you know and that's what he uses so not only is it super convenient on off you know whatever amounts he wants it's nice and warm almost hot coming out of there and that really aids in shaping the mask once the foam is inside this mask you only have 30 seconds to really go around fix the shape he's become so good at it you know he's the best we know okay um but i i like doing the little increments because i can control it more um i'm not turning this to a foam filling video I, I may do a foam filling video soon though i've tried to do a couple in the past and there's all this footage i've lost but i'm gonna foam some stuff and show you what i would do show you precautions you should take ahead of time so you don't have to get up and go get things in the middle of doing it because you only have seconds when that stuff is you know doing its thing so yeah these two um the old jordu viridian viridian alien look at this sucker man look how beautiful that came out i mean just gorgeous it it makes it a lot of people over the years just are not fans of foam filling. Well, at home, I'm going to wear my mask. Like, you really? You wear all these old masks? Okay. I don't know anybody in this in this hobby that really wears their old masks. Maybe for a picture or something. Or maybe at a party once. But, you know, I don't see people wearing their masks. So this, if you are a hardcore mask collector, at least all the guys I know, we prefer them foam filled. You know, it's it's kind of a, you know... It's up in the air whether guys like it or they don't. Most do. But you can see how nice that is. And it's, you know, this thing is never going to sag because of gravity now. It's so beautiful. And that that's amazing. The heat just makes that thing and the and the weight of the foam, it just starts pushing out and it just like the shape becomes out perfect. And if it doesn't, he'll manipulate it like this old mask. You know, I'd be very, I'd be very careful with this, and so did he. I'm sure he moved that around with his hands to get it to look the way it does. I was gonna show. Oh, I gotta show you. I gotta show you three the three that came back that are very very special. It's gonna be like their fifth appearance on this channel. Um, but hey. So when these guys. Keep in mind, uh, keep in mind, keep in mind, it's not only the cost of foam filling each mask, it's the cost of shipping every mask to California and back. <laughs> so, yeah, a mask could be, let's say a mask costs $100 to fill. Hypothetical. Okay, let's just pull a number out of the air. Let's say a mask costs 100 bucks to fill, 150 200 whatever someone charges shipping back and forth to california put another 15 20 bucks ahead on that you know i was nervous i was nervous shipping these back and forth man if one pa i had them in three different packages i'm like man if one gets lost at least the other two will probably make it you know but man it's nerve-wracking like what if that package got lost you know these are so special but god what a what a gorgeous uh foam fill job and he took the time to make a nice tall stand for this one because this is such a short mask so now it fits in nicely with the trio when you display them it's not real short you know so job well done job you know god look at that awesome now i'm dying to make i'm now i'm dying to put together the original trio these were customized and then fill them someday you know i've got this one i got the hack so far but i'm trying to find mint versions of these two with factory finishes you know what these are these are wonderful 
These, my friends, are wacky packs. Uh huh. Remember wacky packages, you guys? You 70s kids, you 80s kids, wacky packages? Oh my god. Before Garbage Pail Kids, there were what we call them wacky packs, you know, for short. It was like packages of, you know, toothpaste and, you know, cigars, everything you could think of, Hawaiian Punch. But they were really funny versions of them. And uh, man, I remember going to, <laughs> I remember going to the uh, local pool, Memorial Park pool in Calumet City, Illinois, and sticking these on the lockers in the, in the locker room, all over the lockers there. Uh, I have books of these things. I recently bought these from someone on eBay. I haven't had wacky packs in decades. I had to get a set. So that's what those are. Um, so back to masks. <clears throat> I've been going over uh, Fangoria issues a lot. Uh, the past few nights I've been upstairs while I watch TV, I bag and board Fangoria's. I brought home Frank's unbelievable set. He, I think he has the first 300, 350 issues. Perfect, perfect condition from number one on, bagged, bagged and boarded, and they're just gorgeous. Even the first 50 issues are perfect perfect so i i have the match that i have all of them um unbagged like in these things so i was just going through and cataloging them all in a book to see if i was missing any but i got like two complete sets of fangorias at least complete up to 150 so one through 150 you know the new stuff you know i'm not crazy about completing all the way but uh man those first the first hundred issues are important to me so back so talking about that i was looking at a lot of the old uh distortions unlimited ads on the back of the magazines or inside the magazines and one mask i would always see that was pretty elusive all these years and to me in one of the ads there was a distortions mask that i've never seen anywhere i think they remade it later on and uh I have him right down here. He's really, he's really neat. <clears throat> I, re I remember this guy from the ads, and from what I've been learning, he is quite rare. He's a big, tough guy. He smokes cigars, and his name is Slugger. Woohoohoo! Yeah, look at that. And this. This is not one of the, I don't know if someone recasted it or if Distortions re-released it at some point. I think they re-released it. This is the original. This is the original. Look at that. 1982. How cool is that? And this is one of those masks I would see in the Distortions ads as a kid, you know. Like, look at that weird mask. Never seen one in my hands. You know, this is the first one I've ever seen. Um, I posted it and someone goes, oh, it's probably the re-release. No, it's not. In fact, in fact, hey, leave that cat alone. Okay, we're back. Um, so what was I going to show you? So on this mask. In here, I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this? There's some what we call crazing going on. If I push on it, you'll see these little, little tiny cracks in the latex. See that? Um, it was somewhere else too on this mask. So what I'm getting at is this is a perfect example of something that should get foam filled. When you start seeing that happening, it's probably going to continue. You know, it's probably... The mask is very old. You know, it's... Uh, 40 freaking years old. 42 years... Yeah, 42 years old. 55 years old. No, I don't know. I can't do math right now. But 
this needs to be saved. It's really rare. It's in great condition. It looks, it looks like a perfect copy. But when you look real close in some areas, you can see little crazing like that. So this guy is heading out to get foam filled because I want to preserve this sucker. Um, he's so cool. So that's one that's definitely um, gonna get whipped into shape. Filled. So that's one that's gonna get foam filled. Um, we're gonna go on a little distortions tangent now because uh, there's a new mask that showed up here. That's a version of an old mask that I went crazy about earlier in the spring. And uh, look at this. Tom Savini, Grand Illusions cards. How cool is that? 50 cents. First, let me get the original, all right? Oh, those of you wondering, does anyone out there know what this is? I highly doubt somebody's gonna know what this logo is from. If you know, if you know what this logo is from, I'm gonna be shocked. Shocked, and I'm also gonna say, wow, if you were there when I was, uh, this is the logo for something very special. Um, I'm not even gonna say what this is from. I wanna see if there's anybody out there in the comments that will know what this is from. And then I'll address it in another video. So remember this guy. Holy smokes. Yes. Remember the 1989 Dead Dreams? Well, my friends, this is the original. I got another one here. And um, it was done by the very talented Connor Dulles, the boy wonder. <laughs> Funny, Connor is grown up now. He's a freaking man. <clears throat> so check this out. Check it out. Connor Dulles. So Connor Dulles did a did a re-sculpt on this classic mask for distortions years ago. <laughs> Look at that. Holy shit. Right now my buddy Josh is going, what the hell? <laughs> Josh, it's a long story. Um, anyway. Um, yeah, so I used to have a copy of Connor Dulles' Dead Dreams. Produced by Distortions, but Connor, a young Connor Dulles sculpted this thing, and uh, I went nuts. I had to have it, and I got one of the original run masks at the time. Only 10 were produced. This is one of the 10. This is number 10 out of the 10 run of 10. Um, and uh, recently, after getting the original in my hands, I never had the original until this year, I said, man, I should get another one of Connors because it's, if you know the channel, you know I love skeletons. Who doesn't? And this is just badass. <laughs> Both of these masks. I would love to find one of these that's not so great shape and uh, do a really detailed repaint on one. You know, I think it'd be really fun. All these little skeletons, you know, this is kind of, they did these kind of quick, but that's the cool thing about them awesome sculpture but they just sprayed some green on these some of them have like goo dripping from them from the factory It'd be fun to do a really detailed paint up on one of these you know anyway look at that side by side the original and the reissue and god counter dust when he was first on the scene he was like a kid you know he blew us away with his talents now he's making masks for Slipknot, stuff like that, you know, crazy. I'd see him at the show and he was like this little, you know, not a little kid, but he was a real young man, you know. And then a couple years later, this guy comes up to me at Mask Fest. He's like, hey, Rudy. I was like, oh, Connor, like you're a, you're a guy now. <laughs> he grew up. <laughs> but man, what, what an amazing talent, Connor. I had these incredible busts by Connor. I had the Texas Chainsaw Massacre pieces. 
I hated selling those. I should never have sold them. They're in two different, I think they're in two different collections now. And uh, back back then I needed money to go to China. So I like, I need some extra money. So I sold those busts and uh, went to Shanghai. Anyway, aren't these cool? And uh, amazing work by Connor. Of course, I think of his Texas chainsaw pieces that are out of this world. Um, awesome, awesome artist. And uh, he's doing great things. I think he may be working with Trick or Treat Studios as well and stuff. All right, so moving on. Mm -hmm. Skeletons in your closet. All right. Hmm. We got to talk about the Phantom of the Opera, Don Post Studios, 1960s and 70s masks. They've been on the channel before, but there's something else down here that I don't think I ever showcased. And I want to show you this item because it's they're pretty unique. All right, hold on. Let me get the masks. Um, classic highbrow phantoms. Um, the, oh God, the gray hair was the seventies version. The white hair was the first style, uh, the first release sixties version. Yes. I don't think I got that backwards. White hair, sixties, gray hair, seventies. Um, very rare, very, very rare to see both of these masks sitting in one spot. I could tell you that. Um, those of you Don Post collectors do know that they did pull out the old mold for these in 1983 and released on another one. <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. They, they did... One more for 83 in the highbrow style. And that's this one. So if you thought this one was unique and none of them look like this one, no, no, no. This is much later version of two predecessors. All right. This is Frank's. This, this is, yeah, this, this one needs to be foam filled still. He's probably going out this week. At the time... At the time this one was made in the 60s, they also produced hands. Don Post Studios produced hands. And I want to show you how massive these hands are. <laughs> They're humongous. I think we did talk about these before. I, I found these in the other room. I go, man, I don't know if we ever talked about these. But I kind of remember talking about them, but it doesn't matter. When's the last time you saw that video, right? The one thing I wanted to explain to you people out there that are new in the hobby is when you're talking about Don Post Studios hands, right? And you're not sure if you've got a set, whether they're Frankenstein, the Hunchback stuff, Phantom, Mummy, and you're not sure if they're real or not, look how massive original 60s hands are. Um, some of the 70s hands are smaller like the smooth Frankenstein hands are much smaller you know the that that 1975 era of the down post stuff wasn't as crazy as this but I mean the 60s stuff even the 60s Frankenstein hands the Frankenstein monster hands are massive um I've seen the one the crazy big Karloff hands and they may even be bigger than these I don't know they're they're close but I mean, I don't have the biggest hands in the world, but look at that. Insane. And this is an original. This is a this is quite rare seeing a real 60s set like this. This set is the one seen in uh, Lee Lambert's book, The Illustrated History of Don Post Studios. Um, these unfortunately have some plaster residue on them. Because there's a knucklehead out there that I know that made a mold of them. And that's what... Well, people, if you guys own really rare shit, if you own some rare 70s mask or some 60s piece, and no one else has one, right? And then some guy out there goes, Hey, dude, 
let me borrow it for like a couple days, bro, and I'm, I'll make a mold of it, and, and I'll make you a free copy. Say, no. This is what they're going to look like when you get them back. And this is after a lot of cleaning, okay? See all this crap on there? Don't, don't let people put liquid plaster all over your rare mask, you know? Don't do it, no matter what they say. Why? So they can make, you know, a few hundred dollars by selling castings? Like, get the hell out of here. I posted some extremely rare stuff over the years, and there's always some guy out there, like the Cousin Erie. I posted Frank's 1975 Cousin Erie that he bought at the famous Monsters Convention in New York City in 1975. Kept it all the way up till 2019 when I got it, or 20, 21. I think, and some dude, I don't even know the guy, uh, he comments, uh, 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 just let me borrow that for like a day, bro, uh, I'll make a sweet mold off of it, and I'm like, looking at him like, are you out of your mind, you, you whack job, no, <laughs> so don't, don't listen to people. You know, if you're if you're new in this hobby and you come across a great piece in your collection, don't let some Yahoo out there talk you into letting him borrow it just because he wants to slap plaster all over it. You know, rip the hair off of it. I'll put new hair on it, bro. No, no. Sorry, there's other ways to make money than ruining my pieces, right? So, at least you got to see how massive original hands are for Don Post Studios because they're, they're pretty freaking big. <laughs> All right, gray haired. God, these are so cool. These old phantoms are incredible. Uh, I'm trying to think of, uh, oh yeah, so back, you Facebookers out there, I have a new Facebook group. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes. All the rest. Yeah, I've always had a secret Facebook group, which I'm making smaller by the minute. I made a group for everyone, okay? I guess some people can't find it. It is private, but you should be able to find it still, right? It's called Crim the Crimson Ghost Mask Room Bazaar. You know, like a place to buy and sell. Not bizarre, like you're weird, but maybe it's some of that. Maybe, yeah. So Crimson Ghost Mask Room Bazaar. Buy, sell, show your stuff off. You got cool stuff you want to show off? This is the place. Um, boy, I was in the Death Studios group recently, and somebody's like, I want to know who has the biggest Death Studios collection. Who are the top four people? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe this guy and these two dudes. Maybe Kevin. Kevin. Pinball Kevin has one of the best collections. Collect Pinball Kevin has one of the best Death Studios collections I've ever seen in my life. There may be people with more. I don't know. But anyway, everyone's like, I don't know. Everyone's just tagging like different people. So I get in there and I go, I want to know who's got the rarest Death Studios pieces. Like, you know, like I want to see the rarest, the hardest to find, you know. And the original poster's like, this is not a contest. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I, I want to see them. Like, I'm sorry, but yeah, yeah, let's see this. So I think we're gonna start a post soon. I wanna see the rarest Death Studio stuff there is. So maybe this week I'll start the post in the group. The guy was getting real pissy about it too. Like, just like, eh, you know, I don't know if he was mad that we were hijacking his thread. <laughs> but like, who cares about quality? Qual quantity? Who cares about quantity? I want quality rare, you know? And it's, it's like, this is not a contest. It is now. It's not, it's not about a contest. It's about wanting to see rare stuff. Like, I'm all about rare masks. Look around me. Uh, so, of course, I want to see rare Death Studios pieces. I've got a handful of really rare Death Studios things, and I'm sure people have stuff that is just as rare. So, I want to, I want to get them all together, you know? It's, it's not showing off and... No. Show us your stuff, okay? Um... There is a Sun Demon on eBay I saw, which is uh, the old hideous Sun Demon. Uh, one of 
of these guys. It says it's from the movie mold. Um, it states it's from the movie mold. It's got a big hole here. It's missing all its teeth. I had another copy where it was missing the teeth too. Everyone says movie mold on this piece, but the story I heard, and I'm just telling you what I've heard regarding the Sun Demon Mask. A nice gentleman out there went to Forey Ackerman, who owned the screen used movie head at the time, and said, Forey, I'm gonna mold your mask. Let me, let me, <laughs> here we go. I got, oh, here's a classic example of what I was just talking about, okay? 10 minutes ago. This is the story I heard. I'm just passing it along. Um, somebody went up to Forey Ackerman and said, Forey, you got the screen used sun demon mask. You know, the screen used one in your collection. Let me, uh, let me make a mold off of that and we'll produce some copies. And that's, to my knowledge, how the copies that exist came to be, right? I don't think anyone had the movie mold and is making copies out of the movie mold. Getting back to Uncle Forey's story, I heard this fine gentleman that asked permission to borrow Forey's sun demon mask, the real prop mask, the hero mask, if you will, made a mold off of it, made some copies, and gave Forey a copy back and kept the real one. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, that's what I heard. I'm just going by what I've been told. So anyway, yeah, the one on eBay is cool. It's at 250 bucks. Still, I'm not knocking that. I'm just telling you, I noticed it. Um, keep in mind, this is all not there. A lot of them are like that, though. I think, um, I'm not sure, like what the deal is i'm not sure this was frank's from the frankenstein so i don't know if um you could probably add acrylic teeth to the one you know the one i had i had a green one that was missing its teeth too but when everyone says movie mold i i don't know because i know there was a prop movie head but i don't know if anybody had the movie mold i think the copies you see out there that surface are from the mold made off of the real head okay just telling you what I'm thinking. Okay, I'm not saying it is, all right? Don't want anybody freaking out. Okay, let's talk about Kathy Tharp. Um, hey, all right, sorry guys, the battery died. So let's get a couple masks down because I got a message from Kathy Tharp. Sorry, the battery died. All right, we're back. So this will be a good way to close out tonight's video. Um, I emailed Kathy a long time ago. Kathy and Rob are retired. She's uh, quite busy with retirement, enjoying her life, you know. They've painted enough masks over the years. They're just so burnt out. But uh, we still remain friends, and uh, she finally wrote back about both of these here. Two different emails. I, I asked her about the she-creature some questions. So, so the she-creature was sculpted around 19... The she creature was sculpted around 1988. I remember molding it in my kitchen by myself. Frank's is very well preserved. Um, so she said she sculpted this in or around 1988. And I remember molding it in my kitchen by myself. I'm happy to see Frank's well preserved pieces ending up with you. We'll talk soon. And then she, okay, regarding the the thing from another world okay this guy kathy says that's an early copy from the first mold so hang on to that one the mold didn't last long because of the materials that was used i had a friend in the fx business help me mold it and he was uncomfortable working with pottery plaster so we went with so we went with stone it didn't absorb as well, or at least very long. Yeah, I heard the mold screwed up on these or something. So that's the story on the thing from another world, the originals. All right, she said this is an early copy, again from the 80s. Um, 
I would think the sculpture was ruined. You know what I'm saying? So I think any copies that came in the second mold could have been it could have been molded off of one of the original copies from the first mold. Does that make sense? If it's a clay, you know, it's a clay sculpture, you put plaster all over it or whatever that material was, and then you take it apart, that and you're scraping out the clay out of the mold and washing it out, like that sculpture's gone. It's it's totally ruined. So I think in my mind, I would say any copies out there that weren't from that very first mold had to be molded off of one of the original copies like this one or someone else's. Um, it'd be interesting to see if any of them out there are, are a tiny bit smaller than this one, you know, because of that generation. It'd be one generation off of the clay sculpture, okay? Um, before we go, I got one really cool thing to show you guys. I went to a toy show and was talking with Mr. Tesco V. Tesco V is the king of monster toys. I mean, his stuff, from what I've seen, I haven't, oh my God, he's invited me to come see his stuff in person. I said, dude, when the weather breaks, I'm getting in the car and driving to Michigan. It's like only three hours from here I gotta see his collection I would love to do a video on his stuff but uh, Tesco was out here near my house at a toy show uh, earlier this year and he had a great display like incredible display of stuff he was selling and he had this Halloween mask in a box I've never seen in my life um, this is cool I've seen Ben Cooper's of course um, the little kids costumes like I used to wear in the boxes. I don't think I've ever seen one of these. Look at this. How cool is this thing? Is there a date on this thing? I mean, look at this. The, the box size is really unique, you know? The, the, the flame retardant. It's a Kusan. Kusan brand. The brand is Kusan. Kusan. K-U-S-A-N. Kusan? Huh. Famous Halloween costumes. They're not that famous. Never even heard of them. But look at the artwork out here. Look at this dude. He's got green socks. Arr! I'm going to get you. Ah, he, 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 he. Abra Ho, 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 ho. Aha, that's him. Let's open this. Wow. And of course... You know what the crazy thing is about this? Look at that little mask. Isn't that wonderful? The cool thing about this is my very first Halloween costume ever in my life was a pirate. I wonder... Oh, 1974. No shit. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> look, I'm a pirate. Oh. Oh. <sighs> Oh, I can, I can smell this and chew fruit stripe gum at the same time. Oh, 100% vinyl. Bottom is 100% rayon. Oh, don't you love rayon? It's so weird. It always stains. Um, so cool. So yeah, I would say it's funny, but 1974-ish, I was two. 1974, I was two years old. I would say I was probably three years old when I wore the pirate costume. Um, and it wasn't this pirate, though. It was the traditional Ben Cooper, I think, with the patch over the eye. He may have had a gold tooth and an earring. Um, I've seen them on eBay, but I got pictures of me wearing that costume in, like, 1974, 1975-ish. But isn't this cool? Um... I should fix this a little better. He said that um, these are quite rare. Tesco was telling me. He's got them all, I think. He's got all the others, he said. But he had maybe he had a double of this one or something, so he, he decided to sell it. I go, dude, I'll buy that right, right now, man. It's so... The box is everything, obviously. You know? Look at... The kids are all dressed up. Just awesome, you know. 
this will go on display out there somewhere but uh, I had to share this with you guys and uh, man Tesco V is uh, I see he's like one of the nicest guys I've ever talked to in the monster hobby next to Andy Williams Andy Williams you're pretty nice I don't know Tesco's nice too great great guys that's the kind of people I like to mingle with in this crazy hobby you know um, I recently sold a, a set of monster cards in the Vintage Monster Toy Group on, on uh, Facebook. And it was the You'll Die Laughing series from 1974. I sold a guy a, a whole set of these cards. And they're from Frank's collection, so you know they're legit. You know, every Frank had everything. And they're, you could tell they're vintage, not a re reproduction at all. This guy actually sends me a money order in the mail. He goes, hey, I'm a friend of Tesco's. He goes, I, I don't do electronic payments. Would you? I go, dude, it's fine. Send me the money order. I would love to go back to all money orders. Trust me. I don't care. I'll go back to the Stone Age. But anyway, he gets them and posts a picture. And there's guys messaging, private message. Those are fake. Those are reprints. Oh, I'm like... You know, now the guy's questioning me, like, oh, these guys are saying this and that. I'm like, what? And then later he goes, no, I could tell they're, or I go, dude, those are original. You know, he, it wasn't him. It was these other morons out there in the vintage monster group, you know, who think they're, uh, you know, the most knowledgeable monster guys in the world by looking at a photograph of the corner of a card. But um, he was very happy with his purchase. I also have the 80s release cards. He's buying them this week. So anyway, um, thank you for waiting for so long for a, ma a mask video. I know, like I said, I went to Mecham, I went to Florida, had to do a couple car videos. Um, there's a there's an update coming on the Trans Am, the '76 Trans Am restoration. They called from Indianapolis. We are bringing the body down this week to have the whole body acid dipped. Yeah. Finally, then this then this restoration is going to go like we're going to really kick ass. A lot's been done. But anyway, we don't want to talk about cars in this video. It's all monsters. Thank you. Thank you for being so patient. Um, this wasn't the longest video in the world, but uh, now that I'm back, I'm leaving town again. <laughs> While I'm here, I'm going to try to scan some of those old photos. I've got hundreds of old photographs that really need, need to be digitally scanned. And uh, I'm dying to show them to you guys. So maybe I can mess with that tomorrow night, scan a bunch of them. Anyway, I'm back and uh, I'm going to cram out as many, I'm going to cram as many videos as I can before my next trip. And um, we will see you soon. Good night.